know what the secret of harvest is? It's knowing how to deal with the negative forces of unbelief. You got to know how to deal with them. I know one thing, they're not going to put this little Jew preacher on the defensive. No way. I'm on the offensive. You say, well, how do you deal with them, Brother Shalom? I deal with them like Jesus did. I ignore them. You'll never hear me get up in the pulpit and waste one second of God's time criticizing any of my so-called enemies. Let them alone. God will deal with them. Don't have time. I got too much time killing the devil, slugging it out, kicking him here, chopping him there. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Glory to God. You know, that's what Jesus did. That's how he handled the negative forces. When they criticized him, he tried his best. Never defended himself. Tried his best to just, you know, make believe they weren't even saying anything. It was only until they pressed him that he even would respond. It's like when he walked into Jairus' house. You remember the ruler of the synagogue whose daughter had died? You remember that story in the Bible? Jesus got to Jairus' house late. Jairus came to meet him. And the scripture I read and the miracle story I read to you last night of the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus met Jesus on that street corner right in that experience. But because Jesus stopped with the woman with the issue of blood, he got to Jairus' house late and the daughter was already dead. <laughs> what a sight. First thing he did when he came through the courtyard of this rich man's house, because Jairus was a wealthy man. As soon as he got into the courtyard, he was met by all these religious leaders. <laughs> they was all crying because Jairus' daughter was dead, but when they saw Jairus walk in, brother, they shut off every tear, and they looked at him like, ah. You know why? Because Jairus is walking hand in hand with Jesus. And those religious leaders looked at him and they said to him, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Think about it. Think about it. You are a ruler of the synagogue. You're a big man. Think about it. Think about it. While you went out chasing this healer, your daughter died. How are you going to live that down? What are you going to say to all the other religious leaders now? Your daughter's dead. What are you going to do? Jairus was stunned. He looked at Jesus. It's not recorded, but I'm sure he must have said something like, what are we going to do, Jesus? Is it strange you don't find a word of dialogue between Jesus and these religious leaders? Not a word of dialogue. He never stopped to defend what happened. He never tried to justify the fact that he got there late. In their eyes. You know what he did? He just made believe and never even heard him. He turned his back on them. He put his hand in Jairus' hand and he whispered over his shoulder. He said, Jairus, remember what I told you back there? I said, I'll come and heal her. Let's go upstairs. <laughs> hey, man! And you know the story. You know how he raised this girl, how her spirit came back into her body. After she had been dead, 
You say, what are you trying to tell me? I'm trying to tell you this. It's not necessary for you to defend who you are. You're a son of the living God. Act like it. Not necessary. Turn your back on every unbelief and just keep getting the job done. Just keep healing the sick. Just keep delivering the oppressed. Just keep saving the lost and let the work speak for itself. All right, John 1030, write it down. Put it in your spirit. Even though the Jews didn't believe the claims concerning Jesus about himself, he knew who he was. He didn't try to defend himself. He didn't need any defense. And instead, he took the offense when they wouldn't believe what he said. And he told them in John 10, 30, he said, I and the Father are one. Now, brother, let me tell you something. That made the devil mad. They picked up stones, the Bible says, and they stoned him. Why? Or they were going to stone him. Why? Because according to the law, the penalty for blasphemy was death by stoning. And they accused Jesus of blasphemy. First, because he said he was the Son of God. Now, because he said he and God are one. Listen to John 10, 32. When they were lifting up their hands and getting ready to throw the stones at Jesus, Jesus asked them, my father has enabled me to do many good deeds. I have shown many acts of mercy in your presence. For which of these do you stone me? Now, in spiritual warfare, you better not only know who you are, but you better know who your enemy is, and you better realize that even though people see the manifestation of God, if their heart and their spirit is set against God, it doesn't make any difference if you raise the dead, so stop trying to frustrate yourself. Did you hear me? Your job is not to prove anything. But your job is to live with a life being manifested in you that will reveal the glory of God, the image of his son, and when you walk through this world with that permeating through your being, you have fulfilled the purposes of God for your life. Let everything else alone. Don't let the devil intimidate you and frustrate you. He is a liar. You hear what I called you? Come on, say it with me. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Say it like you believe it. The devil's a liar. Say it like you believe it. The devil's a liar. And let the whole world know it. John 10, 33, listen to it. Listen to what Jesus continues to say in this experience. 
He said, we are not going, or they answered him, the religious leaders, after Jesus asked them what reason they were going to stone him. They answered him, we are not going to stone you for a good act, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, make yourself out to be God. Now, how do you deal with this supernatural revelation? I told you, <clears throat> when we opened the school of ministry, here in Toronto, that your confusions were going to become the devil's confusions. <laughs> when the G Jews looked at Jesus, they saw him as a man. They saw him as the son of Joseph, the carpenter from Nazareth. They knew God had promised a Messiah, but they didn't expect it to come this way. They thought one would come with a golden crown and, you know, chum speak and lightning would fall from heaven and all the Romans would be killed and the Jews would be set up in the throne. <laughs> they never bothered to read their own scriptures. Now, Every preconceived idea, put this in your spirit, <clears throat> every preconceived idea that comes to us as a result of our environment puts a limitation on us. It hinders us from seeing and it hinders us from believing. Now, these Jews, because of their environment, they put limitations on themselves. If they had eyes to see, ears to hear, they would have heard the words of life. They would have drunk the living water. They would have eaten the living bread. But because of their environment, they were limited in their ability to accept Jesus Christ as the Son of God and then get a hold of this as God. Now, I know that's going to be awful heavy on you, but just tuck it into your spirit. I'll come grab it a little bit later on. Now, remember when I tell you to tuck something in there, don't do like you did to me 30 minutes ago. You didn't remember what I said about going, Jesus went into Satan's territory. All right, now, what did I just tell you to tuck in your spirit? That he is God. All right, you got it in your spirit? Keep it back there. We're going to go get a little bit later on. Now, I want you to notice Jesus' strategy. He told them who he was. Face the devil from this position of knowing. Then he really gave it to them. He said, I and the Father are one. They dialogued together. And they said to him, but brother, they didn't know it. He was leading them. Whew. Jesus was a master strategist. They said, we're not blaspheming you for the good works. We're blessed. We're gonna not stoning you for the good works. We're gonna stone you because you say you're a God. He said, oh, is that right? He said, didn't you ever read the 82nd Psalm? Eighty second Psalm? Listen to what Jesus said, John 10, 34 through 36. 
Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. So men are called gods by the law. Men to whom God's message came and the scripture cannot be set aside or canceled or broken or unknown. If that is true, do you say to me the one whom the Father consecrated and dedicated and set apart for himself and sent into this world, you are blaspheming? Because I said, I am the Son of God. <laughs> Come on, put your hands up and give him praise. What a strategy! What a strategy! Brother, it's no wonder when Jesus got through with the devil in the wilderness, he fled from him. Give him a clap offering.